Doc Talk is brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, a market leader in combination respiratory vaccines. Hi there, folks. Welcome to the show. Dr. Dan Thompson here, and welcome to another episode of Doc Talk. We have an exciting show for you today. We're going to talk with Dr. Bob Larson, who's the Coleman Chair here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. We're going to talk about a new tool to help control bovine viral diarrhea in your cow herd. Stay tuned. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Good to be here. Well, it's always a treat to have you here on the show, and today is, is nothing different. Folks, this is Dr. Bob Larson. He is a professor here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. He's the Coleman Chair and of Production Medicine. And, Bob, we're going to talk about bovine viral diarrhea, but, yes. you know, maybe we ought to just start out and just start laying some of the foundation of what BVD really right. is. Uh, bovine viral diarrhea, or BVD as it's more commonly known, is an important disease for, for beef cattle and, and really for a number of reasons. For one thing, uh, unlike other diseases, it really affects all age categories. So adult cattle can be affected with this virus, uh, very young calves, feedlot calves, so really all segments of the beef and dairy industries have to deal with the BVD virus. Uh, so that makes it important. Also, it, it's a fairly serious uh, disease in that uh, ac diarrhea is in its name, so you would think that's an important part of the disease, but right. actually that's a pretty unusual sign that we see. It's a very strong immune suppressing virus, and so we will see it as a component of respiratory disease. We see it as a cause of abortions and, and poor calf health in young calves, and so it really affects a lot of the different body systems, and so it's, it's a pretty important virus for, the, for beef cattle and dairy cattle producers. Well, it sounds like it has a has an effect on almost any kind of disease we see and kind of sets that's right. animals up for for that by by suppressing that immune system that that's exactly right it, it's an important virus because it 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 affects all aspects of the beef and dairy industries and it's a it's a broadly acting virus it it is it's going to affect the digestive tract the respiratory tract uh, the immune system and, and so it's an important virus uh, numbers of animals usually affected by this well and Many cattle in the United States are exposed, and if it's an adult, healthy animal, the disease is relatively minor. But if that animal is pregnant, she can, it can cause an abortion, or if it's young or if it's stressed due to any other reasons, because of its ability to, to suppress the immune system, uh, we see a lot of other problems. So um, I, I couldn't give you an exact number, but it's one of the more common sure. uh, viral diseases other, that we see. Other countries have eradicated it or, or done eradication programs. That's true, uh, particularly some of the Scandinavian countries have eradicated this virus. They had a much lower beginning uh, level of the disease to start with, and the way that they manage their herds, very little transport, pretty much stay on the, the farm where you were born and raised, that made that possible, although it wasn't easy for those countries either. Right, right, and then of course the PI calf that everybody talks about, um, we got about 30 seconds here before the break, but. The PI calf is, is a special component of BVD, the disease and its control. You can think of the PI calf as kind of the typhoid Mary. This is a calf that's shedding just tremendous amounts of this virus and he's really the, he or she is really the source of the virus for the herd or to be passed to a new herd. 
Great. When we come back, we're going to continue with Dr. Larson talking about BVD and a new tool that they've developed to help control it in your herd. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're glad you joined us. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. This Meet the Veterinarian is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Dr. Doug Ford is the owner of Beaver Creek Veterinary Clinic, located in Brush, Colorado. He is also a partner in Production Animal Consultation, a science-driven, people-focused group of advisors serving animal protein producers worldwide. Doug and his wife, Jan, are the proud parents of five adult children, and as a family, they are passionate stewards of their ranches and livestock. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, joined by Dr. Bob Larson, who's the Coleman Chair, and he is a professor here in the Department of Clinical Sciences at Kansas State University. He's an epidemiologist, does a lot of work with disease control, specifically with beef cattle. And, and Bob, when, when we left the break, we were talking about the importance of BVD as a disease. And we talked about some of the other countries, but when we start to talk about the other countries eradicating it, and it doesn't look like that's gonna be the route for us. Why, what has made this possible here in the U.S.? You know, there's been a lot of work on this disease uh, really since it was discovered in the 1950s. And especially in the last couple of decades, um, the, the companies that that develop vaccines have developed some very effective vaccines that are very good at, at uh, decreasing the risk of this disease in herds where they're exposed. Um, it, like all vaccines, this vaccine performs well when the challenge is low to moderate. If the challenge is very severe, such as in the presence of one of those persistently infected or PI calves, right. uh, that's when uh, th the exposure can overwhelm the immunity developed by a vaccine. So the, the fact that we've got some good vaccines available, and the other thing that's happened in the last 10 to 15 years is some very good accurate diagnostic tests to find that persistently infected animal. Uh, when I was first in practice, it was very difficult to identify a persistently infected or PI animal, uh, a way you know, to differentiate them from other cattle. Um, and as long as we couldn't find them and remove them from the population, it was very difficult to control this disease. So now with the advent of good, accurate, quick tests for this animal, as well as pretty good vaccines, we really have the tools necessary to, to try to really control it, decrease its impact uh, in the nation's 
cattle. So you can find the super shedder type animals, That's get a good them way to out of there, and, and and control the kind of the cold. The, the lower levels, yeah. yeah. The kind of the lower level transfer. Well, I know that you mentioned there were lots of different groups, professional yeah. societies and producer groups, but who are some of those groups that have been behind, behind making this, some of this happen? Yeah. Uh, several of the veterinary organizations took an, an early and active role because this disease is so important. It's one of the it's one of the diseases that affects cattle pretty severely and a lot of different ranches. Um, so uh, the the Academy of Veterinary Consultants mm -hmm. was one of the first organizations. It's a group of veterinarians uh, to really they developed a BVD committee and began working on control strategies. Also, the American Association of Bovine Practitioners and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association have also had BVD control committees. And those committees, uh, that people that have worked on those committees have worked very well together to kind of at, approach this as a team effort to try to uh, develop a lot of good educational materials and uh, kind of directing where some of the research went. And it led it to a web page, right? That's right. And, and that's one of the, the very first steps I think that was very helpful was bvdinfo.org is a, is a website where some of the best articles that have been written about BVD uh, can all be found on one site. Well, again, that website is bvdinfo.org, and you can get good information there on BVD. Uh, Bob, when we come back, we're going to dig into that tool that you all, all right. designed, and uh, awfully glad that you've done it, glad that you're here today. We're glad that you're watching Doc Talk. We're going to take a break, and afterwards, we're going to continue with Dr. Bob Larson. Don't go anywhere. This tip brought to you by Batril 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable. The only Enrofloxacin labeled for single dose administration in cattle is also the only Enrofloxacin labeled for control of BRD in high risk cattle. Batril 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high risk cattle or treating BRD. Welcome to today's On the Farm Tip, sponsored by my friends over at Bear Animal Health. We're gonna talk about market cow quality. 20% of gross revenue of cow-calf operations comes from market cows and market bulls being sold. When we think about sending an animal, whether it's to the sale barn or an animal to slaughter, we need to make sure that that's an animal that we want to properly represent our industry. We don't want to send cows that are too thin. We don't want to send cows that are ill. We don't want to send cows that have cancer eye, that are lame. Or, or have problems with, with pendulous udders or other malformations. Make sure that when you send a cow to market, that it's one that you're proud of and it's one that you'd put on. With BRD, every second counts. And when you get new high-risk cattle, you've got a choice to make. You can either take your chances and wait and see what happens, or you can take charge of BRD. Right from the start, treat bacteria up front with Batril 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved by the FDA for BRD metaphylaxis and high-risk cattle. Ask your veterinarian about Batril 100 and make it your go-to drug to control BRD and high-risk cattle or for treatment of BRD. Batril 100, right the first time. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Your cattle are often at risk of respiratory disease caused by Mycoplasma bovis. But MPB Guard vaccine can help prevent those problems early. MPB Guard delivers proven efficacy against Mycoplasma bovis, even on young calves just 45 days old. It also gives you the convenience of an initial two-dose sub-Q vaccination series. So help guard your cattle from costly respiratory disease caused by Mycoplasma bovis. Just ask your veterinarian about MPB Guard vaccine. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. TrueTest Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. 
Welcome back folks, Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine with Dr. Bob Larson who's a professor in clinical sciences. He's an epidemiologist that studies beef cattle diseases, uh, veterinarian, and he is the Coleman Chair of Production Medicine here at Kansas State University. We're proud to bring him home. The Hiawatha that's, Kansas native that's right. <laughs> is back in, in Northeast Kansas. And uh, we're gonna talk today about your bovine viral di diarrhea uh, BVD consult. Sorry, yes. I'll get spit out sooner or later. Anyway, we're going to talk about the BVD consult that y'all have developed, and so let's jump right yeah. into it. The, the BVD consult is, is designed as a way to help uh, beef cattle producers and their veterinarian design a, a control program for BVD that, that's really a, applicable to their ranch or farm, that, that fits exactly with what they are dealing with. And it was designed to be similar to a phone conversation. Uh, all of us that work with BVD free, you know, frequently get phone calls from producers or veterinarians and there's a series of questions that we ask. So we're on one end of the phone asking questions and then the person on the other end of the phone says yes or no. And then depending on how they answer those questions, we kind of go through a, a pathway in our, in our heads of how we can best give them a uh, control strategy. So we wanted to duplicate that or kind of make that same type Absolutely. of a question and an answer type of a tool uh, interactive on the internet and so that's where BVD consult came from uh, so a beef producer and a lot, I'd like them to do it with their veterinarian because sometimes the veterinarian can help explain some some of the questions and exactly what goes on but a beef producer can get on there by themselves if they want to um, and so you go to the BVD consult which is right there at the front and center on bvdinfo.org and they uh, you click on that and the first question will be do you have do you currently have BVD in your herd if you know you do, you've diagnosed some cattle that have it, you just click yes. And for a herd that is positive, it asks them some specific questions about the different things. It asks, gives you the opportunity, can you do a certain management to get rid of it, yes or no, and then depending on your answer, go on down that path. So basically, it's, 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 a, it's kind of a decision tree. Yes. Do you have the disease? Do you not have the disease? Do you want to get rid of it? Mm -hmm. Are you okay with it? Do you want to keep it out? Right. And then yeah. how you would manage those. Right. There's a whole pathway for if you answer the question no, or honestly, if you don't know if you have BVD in your herd or not, you answer the no and go down that pathway. And it, and it asks you some questions about the important decisions that you can make. You know, things like, do you bring in new, do you test new cattle that you bring in? If you say, I haven't and I don't, and so I'll click no, and, and you'll get some feedback saying, this is a pretty high risk area. <laughs> Are you sure you want to do that? And if you go, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to test, then you go down that pathway and it'll give you an answer. It might tell you that you've left some holes in the control strategy, but it'll tell you exactly where you are. If you kind of go down that pathway and it gives you that warning of you've left a big hole in your disease control, you go, well, I didn't know it was important. I could do that. So you can go back, hit, hit the back button, click yes, I can do that, and it'll take you down those pathways. So it gives you feedback as you're going along uh, when you're making good decisions, bad decisions, or decisions that aren't necessarily good or bad, they're just gonna be specific for your farm. Wow, well folks, I, I suggest that you go to that website, bvdinfo.org. Lots of people have been involved, and we come back, we're gonna talk with Dr. Larson a little bit about who was involved in developing this and how we might apply this to other diseases. You're watching Doc Talk. thanks for joining us. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Hey there folks, welcome to today's Beef Quality Assurance Tip of the Day. And whenever you go through a Beef Quality Assurance assessment, whether you use the tool for feedlots, stalker, or cow-calf operations, some of the things that, that go into feed accessibility, water accessibility, and cattle comfort are going to be checking the water tanks, which we should have clean, ample, fresh supply of water available. We have great management of our water tanks and great management of our feed bunks, and we make sure that the animals have fresh, ample feed supplied in bunks that they can reach and water supply that's available with enough space. Cattle comfort comes in the pen. If we have mud in the pen, we need to get that box blade out or our loader out and start to clear a spot where those animals have a comfortable place to lay down. Water tanks, feed bunks, and cattle comfort in the pen, all part of Beef Quality Assurance Tip of the Day. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. 
Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Hi there, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Be sure to join me at the 47th annual AABP convention September 18th through the 20th. I encourage anybody that's involved in the beef or dairy veterinary profession to attend. Reconnect with other professionals and learn about the practical applications in the beef and dairy industry. There will be scientific sessions, clinical forums, and over 100 animal health exhibitors. If you're a practitioner, a technician, or a vet student, join me at AABP. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you in Albuquerque. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of poron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, thanks for coming back to our final segment of Doc Talk today. I'm joined by Dr. Bob Larson, who's a professor and the Coleman Chair here in the Department of Clinical Sciences at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And, and Bob, there were some people that were involved. I mean. Uh, in the making of this BBD consult, and, and I know that you wanted to give kind of a shout out to some of those that, folks. That's exactly right. For, first of all, I guess I should say, you know, there's been people working on this disease for, for 50 or 60 years, and I guess a shout out to everyone in that, <laughs> yeah. in that lineage of, of, of research that have really helped us understand this disease. But the BBD consult really came together because of some, some hard work by a group of people. Dr. Brad White and myself here at Kansas State University, both faculty members, as well as Dr. Sherry Merrill, a, pr a practitioner here in Kansas that did a lot of the legwork to get this done, uh, really put in a lot of work. We also had a lot of help uh, from some of our uh, colleagues at other universities, Dr. Dave Smith at Mississippi State University, Dr. Dan Givens down at Auburn, uh, Dr. Richard Randall at the University of Nebraska, as well as Dale Grotolution with Zoetis Animal Health, and uh, they helped sponsor this as part of their an educational grant. Wow. It's a great team, great group of people. I'm very fortunate to know everybody on your, yeah, your team group. and uh, that. But you know, the thing that interests me, we mentioned before we started the show that, that this could be a decision tool or a tool that could be extrapolated in many diseases or many different things. And how do you kind of vision that? I, I really think this has the potential to be the, the way to teach disease control both to veterinary students as well as a good way to, in, to, to interact with producers themselves in that as proud as I am of the BVD Info website that has it has brought all the really good research papers into one location but to really get good out of that I'd have to read all those papers and digest them and understand them. The concept behind a BVD consult is as a veterinarian I know the things that are most important to make a decision. Uh, you know where you get your animals what, you, what you're able to do vaccination wise things like that so when I ask specific questions about that then if I use the research to guide how, you know, how does the best answer yep. move from there, you, you, you can avoid having to send somebody to read a large number of really scientific papers, and instead we move them to the questions that we want to ask about the management that they can do or implement at their ranch, and then those of us at the university have read the papers and then used that science to then give the best answers but we don't require people to go read all those papers. We've just kind of made it the decision points, the things that, that people can implement at their ranch. Uh, and, and so we think it has a real 
power to take all the all the work that those scientists have done and really boil it down into the to the action points. Translation from the bench to the field. Yeah, exactly right. And and there's no reason to stop with with BBD. Uh, there's a lot of diseases um, that that cattle face, a lot of management decisions that would work really well with this decision tree. That the series of questions that we ask, it would work well for a lot of different diseases. Well. We appreciate you not only being on the show, but everything you do for a lot of different people. It's good to be here. Thanks a lot, Dan. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for watching Doc Talk. Remember, we always want you to work with your local practitioner, and this BVD consult will be a great tool to break out and, and, and visit with them about. If you want to know more about what we do here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. You've been watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, a market leader in combination respiratory vaccines. <laughs>